into a liquid, and that's what we're going to witness here today. This is a water droplet that you're going to see, and in this water droplet, a frequency uh, is being pumped into this water droplet. As the frequency uh, is mirrored in the droplet, you'll actually see the geometric patterns in that droplet. Now what's happening, and the reason that this is so significant, is because we're going to do a frequency sweep. We're going to go from low frequencies to higher frequencies. And what you'll find is this. You'll see that in the lower frequencies, the patterns are less complex. And in the higher frequency, the patterns are more complex. So we're going through a sweep from lower to higher frequency. I'm sharing this with you now because Earth is essentially going through a frequency sweep. Our fundamental pulse, our base pulse, that has hovered around 7.8 cycles per second, now is changing. And again, there's a lot of controversy about what the change is, and we're witnessing the change. As we go through our planetary shift of this pulse, patterns of energy must change to respond to that, just as patterns of energy in this water are changing to respond to this, to this pulse. And we'll begin with simply the concentric patterns in the water as the frequency begins. Every once in a while, we'll reach a key threshold resonance, such as that moment right there. And in that key threshold resonance, the entire pattern morphed into a more complex expression of itself, simply because the frequency changed. Now watch what happens. The frequency is still increasing. Now watch what happens. As we reach a, another key threshold resonance, this entire pattern will morph into a beautifully uh, and more complex pattern of itself. Again, and again. And look at this pattern right here. Look what you're seeing right here. Look at the beautiful geometry. Here is a perfect cube. There's a perfect tetrahedron, a star tetrahedron. In two dimensions, we've got the octahedron very powerful images of sacred geometry held in place simply because we've achieved the vibratory pattern that allows that in this water droplet. And as the vibration increases, these patterns will become more and more complex. You can see the pulse from where you are. Can you see the pulse actually in, uh, in the water? As we go into this, the last set of the frequencies, what you'll see is that the entire, and you'll watch along the outer perimeter, the entire pattern reaches its greatest level of complexity, and then it goes back. Uh, as the frequencies drop, it goes back to what it was, the concentric circles, as it was originally. It almost looks alive. You know, you've been offered many times the concept that thought is vibration. Have you ever considered that emotion is vibration? Feeling is vibration. We are always feeling something. We are always emoting something. We may not always be aware of what that is. We carry those patterns with us. As we hold a feeling and an emotion, what we're doing is we are holding a vibratory pattern in the liquid crystal of our bodies. Every one of water's properties is unique, and they do not easily fit into the generally accepted laws of physics. Science has not yet been able to answer the question of why water is the only substance on the planet that can exist in three states, liquid, solid, and gaseous. Why does water have the highest surface tension of all liquids? Why is it the most powerful solvent in Earth? And how, in defiance of the Earth's gravity, is water able to rise through the trunks of gigantic trees against tens of atmospheres of pressure? Water has memory. 
Experiments done in many countries around the world have shown that water receives and makes an imprint of any outside influence, remembering everything that occurs in the space that surrounds it. Any substance coming into contact with water leaves a trace in the water. Had our ancestors guessed this when they used silver vessels to turn ordinary water into healing water? It is today the best antibiotic that is made as good in Afghanistan and Iraq. The American army uses this water, one atom per hundred million, to kill all the germs in a wound. So the President of the United States uses this water to keep infectious uh, bugs from his hand. So I said, how can this water be? As it records information, water acquires new properties, yet its chemical composition remains unchanged. So their theory was the chemical composition of the water is important. Now the sensational news is that that is nonsense. The structure of water is much more important than the chemical composition. The structure of water means how its molecules are organized. We can see how water molecules join together into groups. These are called clusters. Scientists came up with the idea that these clusters work as memory cells of a certain sort, in which water recalls the whole history of its relationship with the world as if on magnetic tape. If you consider a cluster as a group of specific molecules, um, then it can survive only a short amount of time. But if you consider it as a structure whereby molecules can leave and other molecules come in, the cluster can last effectively for a very long time. The stability of the cluster structures confirmed the hypothesis that water is capable of recording and storing information. It may be the single most malleable computer, which can, it's like a computer memory. It's the memory of information. We must know how it is arranged. It is like the alphabet. If I give you the alphabet, you don't know a word, you don't know a letter, you don't know a sentence. So the molecular structure is the alphabet of water and you must make a sentence out of water and you can change the sentence. Depending on age, a human being is 70 to 90 percent made of water. An adult drinks approximately two and a half liters of water each day in order to sustain his normal life functions. Another is absorbed through the skin during bathing or showering. Water makes a long and difficult journey before arriving in our homes. It used to be common knowledge that settlement could only occur where there was a natural source of water. Today, whether or not there is water in a place is of no importance because we transport water for thousands of kilometers using high pressure. In nature, rivers and streams always flow along a smoothly curving course. But any water supply system has multiple right angle turns. The natural structure of the water breaks down more and more with each such turn. Water from a water supply system which flows into our homes through pipes has various forms, crystals of various forms, but they're all deformed. That is, it may look like this, it can look this way, or have these crystals and many other arrangements, but you won't see any symmetry or beauty. It is well known that the water supply in many large cities is a closed loop system. After undergoing aggressive chemical purification and passing through powerful filters, the water in these systems is returned to our homes, still remembering the chemicals and the violence it was subjected to. Even stronger, however, is the informational pollution that water accumulates as it flows down kilometers long pipes through thousands and thousands of houses and apartments. Nowhere in the world 
is the water the same? Breaking its way to the surface, through minerals and ores, water assimilates the vibrations of the soil and information about its specific biological and energetical features. We tested this absolutely marvelous water, which is sold in large bottles, and the producer puts a label on them which says, it's the best water in the world, but it is empty and dead. True, it's pure and it's good, and some minerals have been added, but this is dead water in which there is no energetics and there is no life. Most likely, people do not sense any particular difference between naturally pure and artificially purified water. But any animal will always choose water from a spring, because this water is loaded with natural energies. In 1995, Dr. Emoto Masaru was the first one to record musical impressions on water. In Dr. Emoto Masaru's laboratory, they allowed water to listen to music, after which they flash froze the water. And then, under the microscope, they could clearly see the crystals that the water had formed. Here is what the music of Bach looks like. Mozart. Beethoven, <laughs> heavy rock, biophotons in hexagonally structured water. This research was conducted by Mr. and Mrs. XLX in February 2006 and is presented as a world premiere of The Essence of Light An intimate look within the very structure of biophotons The photos that you are about to witness air of single drops of water magnified 30,000 times using a somatoscope courtesy of CRB Incorporated Within the water drops we can now clearly see the presence of the biophotons also referred to as biological light or living light Biophotons are the silent language of the DNA, and thus, are a major key in cellular regenesis. They are present in all living forms, to a greater or lesser degree, and are measured as units per second per centimeter squared. The quantity and quality of biophotons present within the water has a dramatic effect on its life-giving properties. Within each drop of water, there are points of light, which you can see on the right of the screen. This is the first phase of the biophoton. When these biophotons are zoomed into, they take on the form of a hexagon, with multiple layers. Seen in the insert on the left. This is the last phase of the biophoton. In between the first phase, and the last phase, there are six distinct steps, which the biophoton goes through. This was witnessed in numerous types of water samples, and seems to be relatively consistent. It is quite remarkable to view, and may surprise you, as to the perfection of life. We are now going to take a closer look, at the eight phases of a single biophoton, as it unfolds. Image 1. The starting point of the biophoton. It appears as a sun, radiating its six rays of light. Image 2. The sun starts to open up showing a black, six-pointed star, in its center. Image 3. The black star, has now turned into, a small white six-pointed star, with a tightly held, hexagonal shape around it. Image 4. The white star, now turns into a black, six-pointed star, with a hexagonal shape, opening up, and expanding around it. Image 5. The black star has once again turned into a solid white, six-pointed star, reaching to the edge of the outer hexagon. Image 6. The white star is now opening itself up, 
showing an open line, black and white, six-pointed star. Image 7. We now see a small black six-pointed star in the center of a larger, open line, six-pointed star. A star of David within a star of David. Image 8. As we bring the biophoton to its largest state, we can see the many layers of hexagonal shapes within. This is the last phase of the unfolding biophoton that we were able to observe. We tested many different types of water. Distilled water, reverse osmosis water, city chlorinated water, and well water. And then we tested the same waters after they had gone through the hexagon 999 water revitalizing and restructuring unit. This is a sample of city chlorinated water taken from St. Ambrose du Kilbert, Quebec. Notice the number of biophotons present in the water drop. This is the same city chlorinated water taken from St. Ambrose du Kilbert after it has passed through the hexagon 999 countertop unit. Notice that there are hundreds of hexagonally shaped biophoton water drop after it has been restructured using the hexagon 999 unit. Each of these biophotons contributes to the level of structural organization of the water. Compare the number of biophotons in a drop of city chlorinated water before and after going through the hexagon 999 unit. Quite a remarkable difference. This is a typical result witnessed throughout all of our tests on different types of water. The hexagon 999 units, countertop, under the counter, and whole house units, all substantially increase the number of biophotons present in the water. We are now looking at, a sample of reverse osmosis water. This water was full, of these large crystallized globs, as seen on the screen. Reverse osmosis water, contained very few biophotons. We also tested samples of distilled water. This water contained shards, as shown above, along with the same crystallized globs, that we witnessed in reverse osmosis water. Once again, distilled water, contained very few biophotons. When distilled, and reverse osmosis water, was put through the hexagon 999 unit, these shards and crystallized globs, were broken down or eliminated. And there was a substantial increase in biophotons. A final look, at the eight phases, of an unfolding biophoton. These images were recorded on videotape. Under a somatoscope magnification at 30,000 times. The somatoscope was provided, courtesy, of CRB Incorporated. The still images were taken from the moving videotape, in frame by frame, capture mode. A single biophoton, is thus, demonstrating, the life-giving properties, of the hexagonal geometry, and the six-pointed star of David. As the very essence of light. And thus, all biological life itself. I repeat. A single biophoton, is demonstrating, the life-giving properties of the hexagonal geometry and the six-pointed star of David as the very essence of light and thus all biological life itself. It is interesting to note that the last geometry in the biophoton sequence was a six-pointed star within a six-pointed star which is the Fibonacci sequence or the plan of perfection into matter a star of David within a star of David. The life-giving properties of biophotons and hexagon 999 water have been clearly demonstrated in its effect on the health and growth of plants, its effect on animals, its effect on the environment, and its effect on our general well-being. More biophotons equals more light, and more light equals more life force energy. The body becomes what you feed it with. Plants become what you feed them with. Notice the example to the right of your screen. What you are seeing is the top of a tomato, watered with hexagon 999 water. After the stem was removed, it was noticed that there was a small six-pointed star within a larger six-pointed star, clearly imprinted into the tomato. It looks pretty similar to the biophoton next to it, 
does it not? Plants become what you feed them with. Let us now have a look at the magnificent biophotons in action. Magnificent. As we can now see, a single biophoton is demonstrating the life-giving properties of the hexagonal geometry and the six-pointed star of David as the very essence of light and thus all biological life itself.